ahead and uh, read the notice for the record. Tonight we're here at a continuation of case 1602, continuation of a public hearing uh, in the Great Room at the Pleasant Street Center, 49 Pleasant Street, Reading, Massachusetts. Tonight, Thursday, January 19th at 7 p.m. on the petition of MKM Reading LLC, who seeks a comprehensive permit to develop 68 units of rental housing on approximately 42,342 square feet of residentially zoned land under MGL Chapter 40B, Sections 20 to 23, with waivers from zoning requirements on the property located at 3141 Lincoln Street and 212 Prescott Street in Reading, Mass. Uh, a little bit of an <coughs> overview of, uh, of how tonight's meeting should go. Uh, you know, last time we were here, uh, we discussed any uh, of the uh, updates that were presented by the applicant. Um, we uh, had some peer review done. We'll hear from the peer reviewer tonight. We'll hear from the applicant. If the applicant wishes to speak first, you guys have every opportunity to do so. If you want to wait for the peer reviewer, you should have all, all the time that you need. Uh, we will. Uh, uh, ask for any response to peer review findings. Uh, I'm sure the board <coughs> members will have some questions. We'll have some public comment to the extent there is any. And um, we will uh, discuss any of the applicants' uh, requests. Uh, I know several board members, including myself, have some questions, comments regarding the updated draft decision. Uh, and then I think it's our intent, I'm pretty sure it's our intent, and it still remains our intent to close the public hearing tonight uh, and start the, uh, the drafting period, uh, which may include um, some comments by the board about scheduling perhaps a meeting or two following the hearing to get the decision right. Um, so with that said, uh, I think we should probably start with the uh, engineering peer review. Is that, that what we got on for tonight? Parking and loading. Parking and loading, was it parking and loading peer review? Great. Um, I'm sorry, before we do that, does the applicant want to say anything for the record before the peer review starts? Yeah, uh, there's a couple of uh, unsure responses around a couple of things that we got into, which I think they're pertinent for people who haven't been asked to do it before. Okay, let them, at, let them have it. All right, the floor is yours. Thank you. My name is Jason Sobel. I'm a traffic engineer, transportation engineer with uh, Green International. We've been hired by the town to do a peer review. Uh, we reviewed this project uh, much earlier on, um, uh, many months ago. Uh, and our current peer review was somewhat limited in, in scope and focus. Specifically, we, we were looking at a few different loading zone options, as well as the, the feasibility and functionality of providing compact parking spaces on the site um, and, and how those spots might function in good ways to manage those. Um, so Julie, maybe, maybe we can skip to the, to the third slide here. I'll talk about parking first. Um, great. So, all right, so this is the, the project site here uh, with the 85 parking spaces uh, spread, spread underneath. Um, and uh, 25 of the 85, 25 are compact spaces all located in this area here. Um, and that's, that's just under 30% of the total parking supply. Um, generally, in, in communities that, that allow uh, compact parking spaces, this is sort of within the typical industry norms. Um, generally, compact uh, parking space regulations max out between 30, 35%, somewhere in that range. Uh, so, so this certainly is within that range and has sort of a typical industry practice. Um, now there is some concerns regarding uh, management of the parking spaces. Specifically, uh, so everyone is clear, a typical, uh, 
parking space is 9 by 18. These compact spaces are uh, eight, eight and a half by 16. So they are a few feet smaller and, and half a foot narrower. Um, so really what we want to avoid is larger vehicles parking in. Um, to provide some context on this, um, and we'll get into some of the vehicle turning movements a little bit later, but um, you know, generally the, the typical compact parking uh, vehicle that, that was evaluated and, and looked at uh, for the feasibility of this is a vehicle that's 15 feet by uh, 6 feet wide. And just to provide a little bit of context, um, that's basically the size of a, of a Toyota Prius or a Honda Civic, you know, something, something along those lines. And the cord is a little bit longer. Um, but certainly we're not talking about only, you know, the smallest of the small cars. These are kind of average normal cars that, that uh, work well in, in these compact spaces. Um, a larger vehicle like a, like a pickup truck, something like that, that's really what we want to avoid parking in, uh, in compact spaces. So really, um, the, the best way to manage uh, parking in compact spaces, particularly at a residential development uh, project like this, is to have assigned parking spaces um, so that people don't get home from work and they're looking for the, for the closest space or the best space or the last available space. You know, if everyone has their own assigned space, they, they know that they've got a, a car that will fit in the compact space and it's there when they get home and the smaller cars aren't parked in the larger spaces and, and then the, we can avoid the, the uh, larger cars parking in compact spaces. Uh, so that, that's the, the recommended way, how I would recommend to manage these and, and have all these parking spaces managed uh, with individually assigned spaces per unit. Uh, there was also a, a question about uh, shared use spaces uh, for visitors and residents. Um, that's, that type of setup generally works well when there's not a s individually assigned parking spaces. Um, you know, generally how that would work is during the day, most people are at work and you, you could open it up and have more visitor spaces. The issue with having individually assigned parking spaces and, and dual use parking spaces is that someone gets home from work early, something like that, and, and a visitor could be parked in their parking space. Um, in a site like this, where we do have compact parking spaces, I think it's more important to have the individually assigned parking spaces and, and not have people use visitor resident parking spaces. Um, generally speaking, I think the designated parking spaces for visitors should be near either driveway um, I mean, we didn't specifically call out which exact spaces sh there should be, um, but what we don't want is visitors to the site coming through and having to, to meander in and, and look for the visitor parking spaces. We want them to be a clearly visible spot near, um, you know, may maybe a few in near this driveway and a few near that driveway, and then and people would know that they're near the entrance. Uh, all right, so we had a couple of uh, minor concerns regarding the, the site circulation in, in terms of parking maneuvers into and out of these parking spaces. Um, Julie, can, can you zoom into this area here? Mm -hmm. This might make it a little bit easier to, to see. Is that better? Great. Um, so, this area here with the compact spaces is, is a one-way circulation. Uh, do not enter signs are proposed here. Um, these parking spaces along the west side are standard full-size uh, parking spaces. And even though it's a, it's a one-way aisle here, the aisle width here is, is 22 feet, which is a little bit lower than, than what we'd like to see. Um, you know, both driveways are 24 feet. The aisles here are 24 feet. Um, the reason why it's not a major concern is because this area here is really just striped uh, pavement. So it's very easy. They can modify the plans, shift that, uh, that, that pavement marking line just a couple feet over. They've got the 24 feet for, uh, to allow a car park here to back up and then, and then exit. Uh, so, so that's one of our recommendations. Uh, also staying in this area, um, the do not enter signs here. Um, particularly this one is sort of right in the aisle. 
and we recommend that it, it just gets mounted to, and posted a little bit over here so it's out of the way of circulating vehicles. Um, all right, Julie, can we go to the, the last slide now? Sure. And maybe zoom out a little bit here. This, this, is, this slide's already zoomed in a little bit. So this is a figure uh, that was provided by the applicant um, that shows how vehicles would maneuver out of these tight spark, uh, compact parking spaces. Um, there were a few things that, the, uh, really just one thing that, that we added here um, so these are the compact vehicles backing out and then exiting. Um, this one, so the, the whole area here, uh, because of the site layout, the, the aisle width varies a little bit, really is in this area, it ranges between 19 and 20 feet or so. And then at this point right here, and this whole aisle there, that's 18 feet wide. So really the tightest point along this compact row of, of uh, this, that row of compact parking spaces is this last spot here. Um, so in the figure uh, that the applicant had sent us, that they didn't really test these last two spaces where the aisle is tightest. Um, so we did, we did test that. Um, I'm only showing a car coming out of here. Even though it's a little bit tighter at the aisle here, um, this space is actually a little bit easier to maneuver out of because of the, the available space here. Uh, you know, when you back out of a spot, sometimes the front of your car swings into the adjacent spot. Um, so because of that kind of dead space over there, th this spot, this last space, was a little bit easier to maneuver out of. Um, this space actually was the tightest, but we, we show that it does work. Um, and, and the vehicle would be, would be able to maneuver in and out of that compact space. Another, another uh, small discrepancy between this plan that, that they had sent with the other plans that we were reviewing. Um, when we're talking about uh, the layout here, the parking layout, there are six parallel parking spaces along the, the southern edge here. Um, and, th and those are not compact spaces. And as such, they, they use a, a typical passenger size vehicle uh, to, to maneuver into those. Um, but you'll note that to get to this last uh, parallel parking space, uh, a vehicle really needs to move into this area here uh, and then back into this spot. On, on the plans that we had received um, that showed the overall parking layout, this corner had been curved off. Um, so that's an important piece for the vehicle circulation, particularly for that last spot. Um, in the past week, um, I've been corresponding with Julie as well as with the applicant and, and they don't have any issue providing, uh, at least my understanding is that they don't have any issue providing this as a, as a painted area um, flush with the, with the circulating lane so that it can be used for vehicle circulation. Um, so unless there's specific questions about parking, I can move on to loading and of course we can always revisit parking. Yes? Yeah, quick question. Full-size vehicles along that uh, uh, southern uh, boundary there, yeah. This here? Uh, right. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, traffic is circulating down and out, so would not the driver's door be against the fence there? Uh, would that uh, provide difficulty for the drivers getting out if there's a, what is it, a six foot, eight foot fence there, I think? Uh, so it would be an eight foot eight fence. Foot. Eight foot fence, that's what I thought. Uh, and so uh, is that going to interfere with drivers uh, trying to open their door and, and get out? Or? The fence is well, I, um, I think the applicant was saying that there might be a foot or two between the edge of the parking lot and, and the fence. Okay. I'll also note that these parallel parking spaces are nine feet wide. Um, generally, on street parallel parking space, we, we'd like to design to eight feet wide. Um, in tight urban conditions, it's actually okay to go to seven feet. Right. So, given that these are nine feet, um, you know, a, a vehicle could park a little bit further away from from that fence and have a couple of feet to two or three feet to right. exit that. But generally in an urban area, obviously, the drivers getting well, out perfect. on the traffic side and right. passengers are getting out on the sidewalk side and both doors can open. There is not a, uh, generally an obstruction there such as a, a sure. an eight foot fence. Yeah. Sure, I, I certainly understand what yeah. your concern and what you're saying. 
I, I think, you know, given that these would be assigned spaces, okay. I think yeah. a resident coming there after the first time they have a tough time sure. getting out, they'll, they'll give themselves a, a foot or two. And there's enough room to do that without blocking the, uh, the circulating lane. Okay. Yes. <coughs> um, the regular spaces are 9 by 18. Yes. The compact are 8 and a half by, by 16. Yes. Um, which needs to be corrected in the uh, draft. Uh, that's wrong. The draft is wrong. What is the uh, size of the handicap spaces, um, the four handicap spaces? Uh, I believe they're the, the same 9 by 18, and then there's a maneuverability area that I think is 5 feet. Um, I'm going from memory here, but I think 5 feet adjacent to the parking space. Now, does that... I think that's what ADA requires. You know. I think the handicaps are eight, that's by eight codes are eight feet with the five foot aisle. Right. right. I just that, that, that's correct, that's correct. It was my, my mistake. Um, the, the handicap parking spaces are allowed to be a little bit narrower because of that extra maneuver room space immediately adjacent to them. That was my next question. Does that meet the ADA requirements? The eight plus five? Yes, okay. yes it does. John, what page is the error on, please? Um, 11, D. And where is the error? Second line. Those are the four van accessible 8 by 18 spaces. Is that not correct? Okay. Now I'll go down to uh, the 25 compact spaces, 8 and a half by 16. That's correct. Um, Where did I see the, uh, maybe I read that wrong, Julie. Um, okay. I thought that the, that the um, regular spaces were um, eight by 18. I was looking at that, I guess. What's that? Yeah, <clears throat> on, the, on the parking spaces. Any other questions from board members on the parking peer review? All right, continue on, sir. Okay, uh, well, let's move on to the voting discussion. Julie, maybe we can now go back to the first. All right, so there were three different options for loading that, that we reviewed. Um, I'll note that the loading option shown on this plan uh, was, was drawn on an earlier layout of the site. So with this plan, we were specifically just looking at the zoning, uh, at the loading rather, and, and uh, as this is an older site layout here. Um, so that's a, the, the first loading zone area, um, option one, was a 12 by 30 loading area right here in front of the building. And uh, we had a few concerns with this one. Um, First of all, it wasn't entirely clear how a vehicle would access that loading zone. Um, either, either whether they access it either from Lincoln Street or Prescott Street, a, a truck or, or any other vehicle there would be driving over the sidewalk. There's not a clear curb cut. There's no expectation, if, if you're a pedestrian walking on that sidewalk, there's no expectation that a truck might just be crossing the sidewalk right in front of you. Uh, so that was a, that was a concern. Um, Another concern is uh, similarly with the sidewalks. Um, generally, sidewalks are designed not to carry heavy vehicles, and it could be a maintenance concern with heavy vehicles crossing that sidewalk. Um, generally, uh, sidewalks at driveway crossings are, are built with uh, a thicker pavement structure to withstand that, that extra load. Um, additionally, the, the town standards for a loading area, I believe, is 12 by 35 feet. Um, this is as a, with 30 feet here, there's some concern that depending on the size of the vehicle and um, the type of unloading and, and loading that would be going on, there's the potential that this entrance way into the building could be blocked. Um, so for all those reasons, we didn't, we didn't really like this option. Julie, can we now go to option two? Mm -hmm. So in this option, we've got a 
I believe a 17 by 30 loading zone located right here by the side of the building. Um, really what this results in is a, is a longer curb cut opening. Um, we generally think that this is the, the best workable option uh, in terms of function, functionality and, and safety and, and fewest conflicts uh, to locate the loading zone. We, do, uh, we did recommend that a small little, little median island kind of go in this area um, to separate the driveway and the loading zone. Um, that would do a few things that would clearly define where the, where the driveway is and where the loading zone is. We wouldn't want any cars, uh, any visitors or anything like that, people unfamiliar to sort of drive into the loading zone expecting to enter the site. Um, there's a stop sign proposed and, and that little medium thing would, would provide a place to, to mount that and post that stop sign. Um, and there's enough room between the edge of the building and behind the sidewalk where having a, a small raised island to separate the, the driveway from the loading zone would not indeed flow for pedestrians on the sidewalk or, or cause an obstruction there. Um, again, I, I mentioned uh, when we were talking about option one that the town's loading zone standard was 35 feet and not 30. Um, I don't view that as a big concern in this location for a couple of reasons. The, uh, the, the 17 feet by 30 foot loading zone ends really at the property line, which is also, this property line here is, is three feet behind the sidewalk. Um, so any, anyone using that loading space would have that extra three feet available. And then of course the sidewalk area where people could be walking and, and unloading and loading uh, without really being a big hindrance to, to people walking along the sidewalk. Uh, so for all those reasons, and, and, and lastly, um, because it is right next to a driveway and, and, and it's, an open, it's a driveway opening, there's sort of an expectation of pedestrians that, that a vehicle may be entering and exiting. Um, that combined with the loading zone signage that, that we recommended, um, I think it would be pretty clear to a pedestrian that, that a vehicle may be coming, entering or exiting here. Um, certainly rather than, than here, but there's really no driveway and, and no expectation that a vehicle might be crossing the sidewalk. Um, so with that, thank you. Yes. Yes, quick question. Uh, the, there's three spaces uh, in front of, of the loadings on there. Uh, what are those spaces? They look overly wide. Uh, 17 feet deep, I assume, is the same width as the loading area. What, what are those spaces? These, these are regular parking spaces that are, that are 9 by 18 parking spaces. Ah, they, okay. So they, they're a little wider. They're a foot wider than the loading zone is in width. Or oh, their length is. Yes, I, I think the, yeah. um, I mean, the, the really? it looks like there's a building column right here. Yeah. Um, yeah. And the 24 feet, you can see the 24 feet of the driveway aisle yeah. does not extend all the way to the edge of the loading zone. Um, so, so there's that extra foot where these parking spaces extend further into the site <coughs> right here right. by a foot compared to the loading zone. Yeah. Oh, okay. Are they, are they, they were regular width too? Yes, they, they are. Looking, I don't know, just looking at the other space, they look wider. But, Let's okay, be, maybe it's just, just the drawing. Must you know. be an illusion. I mean, okay. We, we measured, we checked those. <laughs> okay. Um, we, we were particularly paying attention to these parking spaces. Sure. Um, Previously, when I mentioned there were 85 total parking spaces, uh, if this loading zone is not here, you know, if, if option three ultimately right. goes ahead, um, which I don't recommend, yeah. uh, they they have actually squeezed in what a fourth parking space there, yeah. and there would be 86 total. Uh, yes. Do you know what the average size uh, of a normal non-trailer moving vehicle is? Like a passenger vehicle? No, 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 no. Oh, I think a moving a truck. truck. Oh, moving truck. Like moving a box truck or something. Yeah. As the opposed to a semi-trailer. Correct. Um, because semi-trailers are just not going to work here. No. Right, right. Certainly so not. So what's the average? Um, Generally 30 feet. As okay. For a single unit vehicle. Now, do you know what the average <laughs> average um, loading, unloading of the trailer takes up? Uh, th that varies by truck. I mean, some ramps kind of extend from the back, and I've seen some uh, that kind of mm. do a 90 degree turn. And so my concern is, uh, as yeah. you had mentioned, Bob, that first space behind the loading zone, yeah. 
um, hopefully is going to be to a unit owner um, that is not there during the day uh, when, the, when it drops off so that it, people can get can drop off their furniture, whatever, and still get it into the building itself without Im impacting that space. I think what uh, what I was anticipating was that a, a truck would be driving head in here and then unload out of the sidewalk area. I have an idea. You, you were saying uh, visitor areas. Could that be considered maybe a visitor spot? And then coned off when a moving vehicle was in it, if, if the visitor wasn't there or something? Certainly could be. Yeah. It, you know, I was thinking of these same things too. And you can get off of, you know, what if, what if, what if. Uh, I mean, you, a, a lot of these box trucks mm -hmm. have side doors. They get unloaded on the side, but well, then you're interfering with exactly. the in and out. Well, uh, uh, on the other hand, here, I mean, th this is also a 17 foot wide yeah. space, so there is room to the side of a vehicle for unloading. It what's what's the typical width of, uh, say, the box being? The, the box Maybe truck. 10 feet wide. 10 feet wide, yeah. Oh, okay. Go ahead, Matt. Um, a two to three bedroom apartment recommended new halls at 20 feet in length, but just say you, the four to five bedroom house is 26. Yeah. So it's somewhere between 20 and 26 is what you would find, especially on apartments, it's different for a house. I think the width is eight to nine, but I think we'll also get into some further discussion about that area. That was kind of what I want with, with our discussions with Red and Light. So there may be some room to discuss with the board how that actually operates. But I think um, the idea for us is that even if it's a 26 foot truck, to make sure there's room for that and that wouldn't impede the sidewalk. So there's enough room to get that in with the room to actually unload it and uh, you need enough room to do all that too. So um, but we did spend time with our engineer mapping on different size trucks on that spot right there. Um, and the, I'll, I'll just add that the 10 foot truck width that I had mentioned, that would be typical for a 30 foot truck, so so it is a bigger truck mm. than uh, what, what the you The largest the truck, the 26 foot or 8 feet, 1 inches wide, that's a U-Haul, a Ryder, a Pepsi, any of those. But I think um, our um, our peer reviewer uh, is mentioning that there are a lot of a lot of the delivery, not delivery, but furniture, moving vans yeah. are the 30 footers, be, right. and the, rather right. than the Somebody 26 a moving company. They, yeah. yeah, it's not the rentals that, that I was concerned about. It was the is is the average professional um, moving vehicle. Right. We've seen some that are even bigger how people do it. You know, so right. I mean, I think. I have discussion about the sizes and everything that we can get into that. Well, you, you have an, another very interesting issue that you did bring up uh, relative to that particular site and Reading Municipal Light, which still needs to be addressed. But that, that's, that, that can be for later yeah, when you get there. <laughs> sure. Um, well, on that note, why don't we move on to option three? three. So in, in option three, um, there wouldn't be a separate uh, specific loading zone. Rather, the, the six um, 9 by 22 parking spaces would be a shared use and, and would become three 9 by 44 loading zone spaces. Um, and we had, uh, we had several concerns with this as well. Um, one of which is that it, it's within the building, within the site, and uh, I believe there are some uh, low entrances and exits uh, which would limit the size of a vehicle that actually could, could access the loading zones in the first place. Uh, the other concern is that um, I mean, anyone who's rented a truck would know it's a little less maneuverable, uh, particularly as an unfamiliar driver. Um, so there's some concerns about uh, actually being able to maneuver, and, and I certainly wouldn't want to parallel park a, a rented truck. Uh, um, not to mention it's also narrower, and uh, depending on the width of the vehicle, um, there's the fence here, if there's a couple of feet that the driver leaves, um, you know, there's the potential that it could block some of that 18-foot circulation. Um, and really that would be a 
primary, uh, a primary concern sort of in this area here uh, for these two compact spaces, maneuver, vehicles maneuvering out of those, backing up, um, if they don't really have the full aisle width to maneuver. Um, and then the other concern that we had with this location is just sort of the general concern that I talked about earlier about uh, dual use parking spaces and the desire be to have assigned parking spaces because of the compact spaces that are provided. Um, and if all the spaces are assigned and you know, these spaces are assigned to other units and their home, you know, they're not going to want to move their spot to allow someone else to, to use the loading zone. So with that, we, we thought that the loading option two was, was the best of the three uh, that the applicant had presented. So unless there's other questions, I'll, I'll turn it back over to the board. Thank you very much. Uh, I think it's appropriate for the applicant to have a time to make any comments related to the peer reviews and uh, anything else you'd like to discuss about parking and loading? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, real quick, so thank you, Jason, for that. Um, I think we are amenable to incorporating all the recommendations that were in his peer review report into the decision. Um, there are many good comments, and I think that just a blanket. Um, the, the one thing we went back and forth and discussed, is, and we uh, think having assigned spaces for each unit is a good idea. And I think having designated visitor spaces was a good idea. And I think we came up with you know, maybe if there I think it was five visitor spaces designated, um, and then eight that would be there's the four handicapped. Every unit got one. I mean, that may be wrong, but the eight left over could be rented as a second car to a unit. But if it wasn't, it would be still designated as a visitor space. So you would have between five and 13 designated visitor spaces, and then every other unit would have a, um, have a space assigned to them. So I think that's, if I, if I maybe I'm wrong with my numbers there. Um, that's, that's correct. Um, and I think that would be a good, from the traffic management, um, that will help address some of the concerns that were brought up by the board and, and, and that we heard from the door. Um, the loading zone, so we have, uh, I think what, um, the town bylaw for loading zones 12 by 35. I'm sure somebody spent some time trying to figure out why that was a good number. Um, right now we have 17 feet on that loading zone. Mm -hmm. I think ultimately with writing light how it's going to be resolved um, and we'll discuss with the board, but the transformer is going to move. Thank you so much. <laughs> the transformer will probably move up to the side here. And there's, um, if we lose that space for now, and made this 12 by with 30, but if you lose the space, you can actually make it a little longer and move the transformer up here. Um, and instead of, it, it'd be 17, but it would really be 12 with a five foot path to the transformer. Um, that addresses having them access either through loading or if they're parked on the road, red and light can walk through the path and they can have access around it. And it gives us a little more room between the loading and the next parking, so that if, you know whether it was 30 or a number higher, there is there is more room there. You got rid of this nine feet width there. Um, with that said, that would make 84 parking spaces, which is a 1.23 ratio. Um, our preference would be that would be what if we would ask for. If it was in, you know the board insisted um, that it, you know, we got to 1.25, there there is a places we could add spaces. Mm -hmm. It would probably be taking some of the club space um, that we have that we look to program and, and work with the town on. So we prefer not to do that, but there is room to add a space back somewhere. But if we did do that, this, this really makes the transformer and the loading zone work even better here. And I think um, Jason's recommendations of an island and, and working on the design here to make sure, sure it's as safe as possible um, is it, what we, you know, we're committed to doing. So, I just wanted to update you. I, I, that's how I think red and white will ultimately come down at the end to make sure it works. So I just wanted to see what the board's thoughts were ultimately, because I wouldn't want to say this was it, and then red and white says, we really want the transformer here, and say, and I come back and say, well, we, this is what we did. So I just wanted to put it on the table now. Is that what we're considering with them? You're considering it. Have you discussed it with We've sent it to them in more way. I mean, that addressed their what they didn't like here is they had no way to access by vehicle. Um, 
So when we move it up here, they have ways to not only access it by foot, but also by they have the loading zone if they needed to pull in there to, to do something in the event that they really needed to pull right up next to it. And it also, and we could find a way to squeeze this space back on, but I think giving some breathing room to this loading space is a good thing. So if we got rid of that space and the transformer came right here, because this is 17, remember, and then so it really was designated as 12 with like a five foot path next to it that they could, in, in essence, it's still 17 feet of kind of pavement, but it's kind of designated as loading and the path for running like to walk to the transformer. So where would but you? I, I, and I think we, I mean, I think the way it's in the decision is it's continued, you know, we need to get, I mean, just like you would with Verizon mm -hmm. or anyone else that you were working with, um, gas or whoever they have to, you know, they have to have a plan that's accessible to them at the end of the day. There's still other things with letting light, you know, location of need, all that stuff that gets worked out as you get more detailed. But I think just, um, you know, wanted to bring the board up to date on that discussion. That will continue to be ongoing, I imagine, until we're a lot further along. Quick, quick question. I don't know if it's uh, Matt or, or Jason. Uh, the traffic uh, pattern on the loading zone now. I, it looks to me, if I were driving it, are they going to be, when they exit the site, driving all the way through and out the exit onto Prescott, or will they back out onto Lincoln and then go? Do you know, or had you thought about that? I think backing out onto Lincoln. Um, I, I think there's some I building beams here that would be really tough for a larger vehicle. No, that's what I thought, and then you can get under the building. I know no, we had concerns no, with height not. before. Yeah, it's next to the building. Okay, so they'd have to back out onto Lincoln right. and then yeah. uh, proceed from there. Yeah. Okay. Matt, where would you put, if, if that were that space directly behind the <coughs> loading zone, proposed loading zone, uh, where would you put the additional parking space to maintain the uh, 1.25. We, we, we have plenty of room. The club, we could put one space next to the handicap space, uh, one of the two handicap spaces there. We could put one right there. Mm -hmm. yeah. and you, it's, you know, you're losing nine by 18, so you're losing 150 square feet of space inside. That, you know, it, it, could, it could support losing that. We just prefer not to do that, but we, if we had to, we would. But if, if you were to do that next to the club, um, you, that would impact the handicapped van um, immediately to the left of the club um, because you don't have your additional uh, five feet unless you back one in and pull one in. No, I mean, think there's plenty of room to rear. I mean, that whole where the, ele the elevators may move to the left where the elevators are, and you may put one where the elevators are now. Um, so it, it was just there's there's plenty of room there to add a space. If we haven't laid it out. If, 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 if it was, if 1.25 was what we had to get to, that was letting you know that it would go somewhere there. Okay. I'll also add that the five feet of maneuver space next to a handicap spot can be shared between two handicap spaces. Um, so a, an additional regular space could go here and, and there wouldn't be an issue from an ADA perspective with losing that space and then okay. immediately adjacent to the handicap spot. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, any other board questions? Uh, one more. Oh, go ahead, si. has, has Reading Municipal Light identified for you the specific dimensional space they need to be able to access the transformer? Uh, I think I read something where they might need, to, if they had to replace it, for example, they probably need two vehicles. They just want um, th their specifics, and I think there's actually comments from them. So, that, as far as I remember, that they, as long as they can pull a vehicle up to the transformer is what they were looking for. They didn't want to have to pull a vehicle if they needed to replace it and then have to walk to get to it. Is what they were looking for. Typically, we would 20 feet of side of the feet of a uh, flatbed truck. I read in here where it said they need to be able to set up a flatbed delivery truck and a line truck next to the transformer to facilitate the replacement. That's two trucks. Hmm? So 35 
but you haven't got anything in writing um, from? Well, it hasn't been finalized yet. I mean, we made a long time ago told us they needed a 10 by 10 pad that they could access and that we were going to have to work this out. So I think we're still working kind of two steps ahead by talking about maybe losing a parking space. Or we're hoping not to if we're just kind of bringing that up as a contingency plan. If we need to do that, we think that definitely solves their issues, which is being able to back up to it, having the second uh, truck be able to back up next to that, which would be in the drive aisle there, uh, and being able to have direct access from the site without having to go uh, under the building. Right, so as, as I read their comments, just you probably took a look at them as well, there's an issue with a riser pole, and that's something that you're going to work with them on in terms of not uh, interfering with an abutter, and certainly you'll take that into consideration. And then, you know, I think much attention needs to be paid to the next second issue, uh, given what appears to be commentary that they do their lifting from the rear. And so I'm not sure using that loading zone, which is, is it, remind me again, is any of that loading zone under the, under the, under cover? No, that's all open. Oh, okay. so you can back right up to the, <coughs> we designed it so you can back right up to the next one. All right. Um, but then there's an, I think, side raise at the, the, their request slash requirement that they be allowed to have two trucks side by side to be able to lift the transformer. So. I'm not sure that to the right of the to the to the right of the it's on the sidewalk they'd still be able to get the truck there. oh I see so they they have to basically pull up onto the to the sidewalk in order to get parallel to the loading zone and the, it, we've had a good dialogue with them from the beginning we're very confident just uh, we know <coughs> what the parameters are and we're committed to working with them I mean, these are construction details that they're engineer and then our engineer will ultimately uh, work out and I think um, just like we have to do with all utilities around there um, you know and if, even the riser pull I mean there's going to be solutions to it um, we feel like that I brought up moving it there because I think that addresses their concerns we're just waiting for their <coughs> feedback we've sent in plans so that's what we're waiting for now but all right. that, that we're fine with it as a condition and, and then just to just to make sure it's on the record, the latest that we have is that RMLD does not agree with the relocation of the transformer and the riser pole. That was so that was prior. That prior. was that was to address yes. that. Was okay. All right. Good. I just yeah. wanted to that I want to make sure I understand yeah. where in time yeah. we are. So it was this plan. It was this plan that they were. So they, they were reacting to the location mark shown here. Okay. All right. All right. So. Uh, any other questions from the board or comments regarding peer reviews, parking and loading? All right, then I, then I think it's probably, because I'm sure the board's, we're going to want to have some discussion related to the decision, excuse me, questions and issues from board members specifically. But I think before we do that, it probably makes sense to open us up to public comment right now um, and have um, some, uh, I guess, final, if you will because we're, we're, we're going to close the hearing tonight. Uh, comments from the public, just um, a reminder, uh, please identify yourself uh, by name and address. Uh, wait to be recognized by the chair if you have something to say. Address your commentary to the board. And, uh, you know, obviously let's keep it uh, respectful and on point. Tonight, specifically, uh, the issues for discussion, and I hope board, uh, public comment might focus on this to the extent that you can keep it focused, is the loading zone and, and parking discussion. Um, if there's something else uh, that's not really on the table tonight, but I suppose, uh, you know, we'll allow some latitude in that regard. So if you'd like to, uh, if any member of the public would like to speak, uh, please let me know. Blodgett. Uh, thank you. First of all, I think um, my Virginia Blodgett is <laughs> nine on Crossway Street. I think that I would like to thank the board <coughs> before we begin this kind of long, protracted, um, you know, I know that you deal with appeals all the time on a much smaller basis. Uh, I think 
the, um, I guess what I call the elephant in the room, which is the void B, makes a whole different uh, situation. I also feel that because of that, I, I guess I hear, not from you, but from around town, too many people who say, throw up their hands and say, it's 40 B, we can't do anything about it, it's done deal, you know, it just happens. And I really would like to, I appreciate the fact that you have taken a lot of time to work with us to question it. Um, at this point, with the discussion of the, um, the floating zone, I guess I still have a lot of concern on one. Uh, it's been bandied around, the requirement is four, or I guess 3.4 at this point, based on the 68 units. But I feel that, um, you know, so often you, you give a little bit, like a few inches here, a few feet there, or something or other, but to go from four to one seems like a huge change as far as the zoning requirement, and therefore I would um, respectfully ask that you deny that waiver. I also feel at this point we are all approaching the end of the line, and I know that you're going to be taking time to write your responses and so on and so forth. I feel that the board has a responsibility and the authority to represent the town at this point. And to say to the, to the, to the um, developer that we don't have to grant what you're asking for just because it's 40B. If it has to go beyond this to the housing authority, then let's go to the housing authority. At least you will uh, have taken a stand to uphold what you always are upholding, which is our zoning bylaws. I feel that uh, at this point, it's, it's the responsibility of the developer to make changes that make that suitable. And if they can't do it, and if they, they deem that it is economically not feasible, then maybe they need to go somewhere else. Thank you. Any other folks? Mr. Blore. Um, just a quick story coming across the uh, Washington Street <coughs> intersection of Maine the other day by Jim Brooks. Um, there were loading, several loading spots out back. And um, the uh, box truck had decided, since that was all full, that they would pull up onto the sidewalk, block the sidewalk, block the left eastbound traffic lane, and everybody was in the house. You couldn't walk by it, you couldn't get by by one lane of traffic. They were doing something just that was there. And there's several spaces out there that they could have done that if the cars were not there. They needed more than one loading zone. Actually, I'm supporting what my wife said here in that one loading zone isn't enough for this particular area. And that, that requirement of 3.4 to 4 is really a safety of the people driving and walking in the area. It's just it's just such a difficult area. Like that. You have on the Lincoln Street. You can't drive through Lincoln Street at certain times. So I would also ask that you do not grant the labor, and especially dropping it from four and one is very, very interesting problem. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Jean Towns is 21 Arlington Street. I'm approaching this from the neighborliness. <coughs> We've talked about that many times. I am one of the people who lives very close to this. There is um, C, 27C, is talking about trash collection. And it says, shall be on Prescott Street, shall be before, if between 5.30 and 8.30 a.m. or 4.30 to 7.30 a.m. I request that it say, not before 5.30, and it say not after 7.30 p.m. Sorry, it says trash removal by a hired hauler shall not occur along Prescott Street between 5.30 and 8.30 a.m. or 4.30 and 7.30 p.m. So you're saying before 5.30 and after 7.30? All right, so when is it occurring? Um, between 8.30 and 4.30. Between the middle of the day? Yes. That was my intention. Okay, well, thank you. Um, given that there has to be 20 feet regarding exiting and entering the parking, we talked before about the eight spots that are on Prescott Street now. Are those 
I understand that during construction, those spots may not be available, but I hope that the town feels a pr proprietary sense that those spots come back. And how do you do that? We have to have a 20 foot border there for the clearance. Is the Prescott just an exit, or is it also an entrance? So that, that's a direct question. Is Prescott Street just an exit, or is it also an entrance? Okay, let's see, that thing. I think it's just an exit. Just an exit. Yeah, right there. Yeah, right it's there. just an exit. Just an exit. No, no it's, it's an entrance and an exit. It's both. It's both. a 24 foot wide two way driveway. Oh, it's two way. It's two way. Right. It's two -way. Two -way. And then there's okay. do not enter signs so they don't go straight. Right. Oh, so it becomes a one way right there. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Right. Okay. Got it. Got so it. they have to go in there. Okay, so they can come in there. Yep, it is an entrance and exit. Yep. I realize that this comes later, later on in the plan, in the plan finality of the construction. But they have asked before about the sound and the lights of the exit and entrance, whether there are gates going up and down, if there's a beep, if there's a flashing light. I'm I'm within vision of and hearing of these things, so that's one of my question. I'm wondering what the pet policy is, allowance of pets. In a very small neighborhood, some people walk dogs. Will, be, will that be increased? Will people be walking numerous dogs? This must be this one of the most available places to walk. That's it, Julie Street. Um, so I'm concerned about the sound. And then I, I mentioned this in the very beginning that the garage is all glass. And I would hope, excuse me, that it would be frosted glass. Not clear glass, but frosted glass for the appearance of so much parking being visible from the street in the Thank you. Thank you. Uh, did you want to respond to any of those uh, concerns? Or? The on-street parking, I think we have shown a plan at some point. Um, when we didn't need to calculate it based on 20 feet from the entrances. And uh, before, when we had the two spaces in front, we had the same amount on-street that's there now. So I would imagine if those don't become loading, those would become on-street spaces. Um, so you would have probably more than there now. There's the curbing, you know, the you know the, the curbing that it currently exists, and you can just look at a picture. There's a 55 foot opening next to a 30 foot opening, and there's another 50 foot opening. So would we be? Those would all be available for on street parking, working with uh, DPW in the future. And once we finish the road, of, um, whether it's striping or I don't know how they would want it to be at the end of the day, but uh, I believe it will be equal to a more <coughs> on street parking at the end of the day. Thank you. Are there any other? Yes, ma'am. other uh, public comment? Yes, ma'am. Is there an answer to the inquiry about policy for pets? Um, Mrs. Thomas, is that's not generally under the purview of the Zoning Board of Appeals. I will say that most buildings have rules and regulations, uh, and uh, the developer has put together at least a draft of a property management manual. And I would imagine that it is uh, up to the developer as to whether or not to uh, allow pets. 
and how pets will be managed on the property. Uh, anything off the property would be certainly a, a town issue uh, and would be subject to public safety uh, notification if it became an issue, but uh, that's, that's generally not something that would be part of a, of a, of a zoning board decision. Um, sure. Did I misstate that in any way, shape, or form? Conversation of uh, policies and the trend in buildings, but I, okay. I'm more than happy to have that offline. Uh, with, with, uh, you had a question, comment, Robert? Yeah, uh, she had a question about uh, uh, mechanical devices uh, used to exit and entrance. Right. Maybe you'd want to comment on that. Is there another, any plans for that? Another good question. I don't think we've um, spec'd that out yet, but I believe there's something in the decision that that has to get worked. You know, um, what CPDC and maybe Julie can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think there was something in the decision about um, garage doors um, and, and any noises or sounds or lights that um, have to go through CPDC to make sure that sure, um, they're properly done and not using so, It's a detail we haven't thought about. Page 16, condition 10, talks about garage access. Mm -hmm. I don't, it doesn't mention the CPDC, okay. um, but I haven't looked at this in a few days, so I'd be misremembering. Yes, sir. Uh, Robert Bartlett from Street. Just a comment about the transformer pad and um, the online information that's available that says that both the truck and the flatbed, the majority of the truck and the flatbed, have to be next to the transformer pad. I'm not sure if that's what they're saying. Side by side next to each other isn't necessarily next to the transformer pad. Okay, yep, yeah, thank you. All right, any further? Yes, ma'am. My name is Mona Lee. I'm on 64 Riverside Drive. And the residents of Prescott Street and Arlington Street, as they had said, that this is a 40 uh project. So what are you going to do to stop anything? And, and I understand that. We understand that. Uh, in hindsight, the project would be magnificent. And we will all say we agonize and stressed over this for so long for nothing. Look how beautiful it is. But also, it could go the other way. And you don't want to say, we should have, we could have, we didn't. And once it's up, it's up. That's it. Now, is anybody going to come back to correct it? Or are there going to be hearings again with the provisos to fix anything? If not, I myself, everybody's heard me before that I walk everywhere. Am I going to find that this whole project on Prescott Street is so beautiful that I want to walk by it and admire it every day, or hate it so much? that I'm going to have to detour, walk all the way around a different avenue to get to CVS or get to Market Basket because that's the street pathway down Prescott Street from Riverside or Sunnyside to go to the train station to uh, Rite Aid to, um, to here. So am I elongating my travel around the city to get somewhere else to avoid looking at it? That's if in hindsight, oh, it's not what we thought was going to be on the diagram. So it looks beautiful, but we should have put up and how come we can then it's too late because people who don't live around there are never going to really walk around there and drive by there. The traffic, everybody has already said, I guess there was a uh, study, is not going to impact anything. With all the commuters going to the train station and with the cars in and out, and yes, it's already been studied that well, in the morning these people are going to leave and then there's going to be love and they're going to come back. But that's the same time all the people are going to be uh, um, Schedule trains in the morning and the evening, so all that traffic is going on at the same time. And I think it will have an impact if people are living around there. As the young lady said about the UPS truck and the um, Amazon trucks, they will, they probably will be parked in front of everybody's houses there. Like, you can't stop them from, you can only deliver at this time. So it probably would be a little more chaotic and a little more uh, busy than we actually think on paper. It looks absolutely great. but. Only in hindsight, later on, after the project is built, we'll know what happens, and that's where the down the road. You know, you know, you don't want to run, you know, every day when you walk by. That's all. So, thank you. Thank you very much. Any other members of the audience have any further comment? All right. Hearing none, we'll close the. Uh, public input session, public comment session, and I think it's probably appropriate now to uh, have a discussion 
uh, among board members, perhaps with the applicant and town staff input to um, make any, well, discuss any proposed changes to the draft decision that we've all had a chance to take a look at. Um, perhaps in the interest of simplifying a couple of pending issues or perhaps even leading the discussion on, on one, um, there was, I received a, a memo yesterday from the town manager speaking on behalf of the Board of Selectmen addressing the developer's concern regarding this board's uh, authority, if you will, to uh, condition uh, the extra wide curb cut, and I presume we're review where uh, it's the curb cut for the loading zone, um, and uh, that um, the selectmen were polled uh, so as not to violate the open meeting law, and were in agreement that this board could uh, act as the granting authority with regard to authorizing that extra wide curb cut, uh, and that the board of selectmen was. Uh, not opposed to that extra wide curb cut as long as the final plan that precedes the design is the same as has been submitted for their approval as long as it doesn't change. And so um, if it's agreeable to town staff uh, and agreeable to this board, and I suppose we ought to just make sure it's agreeable to this board that now that that we're vested with the authority or uh, it's confirmed that we're vested with the authority and have the agreement of the Board of Selectmen whether or not perhaps we want to simplify that and uh, do we have any comments regarding that extra wide curb cut? Nope. Hearing none, then, then I think that we can, um, we can condition or, or remove the condition uh, that the applicant needs to go before the Board of Selectmen regarding that, that curb cut and that presuming it's, it's done in accordance with the plans that are presently before the Board that uh, will remove that condition. That sounds like a plan, Jewel. I might reword it to say what you just said oh, versus removing it. Okay. Just so it's on the record that this curb cut had some approval, some conversation. Um, Right, you mean that this board discussed it? Right. Yeah. Right. So and so that it's in the decision. Okay. Well, right. the we can go. I mean, we can discuss it further. Right. I'm just letting you know. I might not just delete the whole thing out. No, 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 no. mention that's, of it at all. No, here. that's fine. I, I think okay. it's appropriate to have right. some commentary in there. And yeah. Some language. Um. I think. Other than some public comment letters. I, I think it's appropriate now to address specific board concerns. I have a few, but um, but I think, you know, we'll go down through the board members and see what, I mean, we may overlap, excuse me, we may uh, have differing concerns, but um, things that, you know, we want to probably speak loudly and clearly so that, especially so Julie can um, add or subtract or edit perhaps at least generally, I, you know, I think we contemplate that we'll have at least another meeting following the close of the hearing to formalize the specific language, but if we can get at least the concepts and the uh, specific conditions or, or concerns addressed tonight, that I think that would be a step in the right direction. Um, why, don't, why don't we go in order? Go ahead, John. No, I just want to oh, else. Okay, Robert. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, I, I, I had submitted a few comments uh, to the town. I, I'd be happy to go over them. And uh, it, it's maybe two, uh, just some of my comments may be just uh, critical uh, for, for the uh, uh, decision. And it just needs uh, uh, reiteration on that. Uh, let's see here. Okay, under uh, uh, the findings. And I had noted that uh, under, under number nine, project overview, landscaping screening, and it was noted in the decision that a revised landscaping plan is required. And there was just a concern, do we still need to uh, uh, insert that in there, that we are expecting a, a plan and it 
to revise landscaping plan and is required and when when do we expect it and when should it be submitted uh, that's a question on that and then, uh, same thing under uh, J drainage uh, it notes in the uh, uh, draft agreement that a revised report is needed uh, do, we, do we need one and, and if so when are we going to get one uh, questions on that uh, under the waivers uh, I noted uh, number four, uh, the project shell. Let's insert the word shell in there, provide for a minimum of 1.25 spaces per unit. Uh, and I, I'm, I'd be adamant in, in sticking with that. That's what we want, that's what we've agreed with, 1.25 spaces, I wouldn't want to go below that. And that's why I put we shall provide for a minimum of that. And uh, under number seven for the waivers, the uh, project shall provide for one loading space with a minimum dimension of 30 feet by 17 feet on site as depicted on the approved plans. Uh, similar, and that would maybe fall where we could get the curb cut in there too as, as depicted on the uh, final plans or on the approved plans. And uh, under conditions, uh, I uh, wanted to uh, insert that uh, concrete sidewalks with granite curbing uh, shall be constructed as depicted on the approved plans and where possible as it relates to the project, et cetera, et cetera. But slip that in, uh, into number 11, that sentence there, concrete that sidewalks with granite curbing. That's and, uh, number 11 on page 14. Conditions? Yeah. Number 11? Page 14. Street improvements and some of the showing is on to repaving, striping, some improvements to the streets within the project area shall improve but not be limited to repaving, striping. Where possible, is it related? Okay, that goes into the second sentence. Where possible, so I don't like it. Where possible, as it relates to this project, sidewalks should be widened to allow the provision of public amenities. Okay, I think we should tell them the types of sidewalks and the granite curbing that we expect them to have. Now, and I believe that that's, that's meets town standards, right. And I, I just wanted to make sure that was in there. So Robert, they are required to work with the town engineer yeah. when they do this, and so they will be required to meet town standards. Okay. Well, I can add that language in yeah. there, it's no problem. I make sure we do it. Okay. And then the uh, other comment that I had was, uh, or at least, one another comment is uh, prior to the commencement of the site work, et cetera, et cetera, uh, number one, the uh, professional engineer and the uh, registered land surveyor should be Massachusetts licensed, not just licensed, but licensed in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. We don't want to get a New Hampshire license in here. Uh, the town I don't think would accept <laughs> <laughs> I've had it happen. I've had it happen. Believe me. Uh, number 20, uh, I wanted to uh, be adamant in this. There should be no parking of construction vehicles or workers' personal vehicles on public ways or property. There should be no short storage of construction materials on public ways or property. It should all be on site. So, uh, construction dumpsters shall be located on site on property. And, uh, and then uh, the last comment I had was on snow management. Snow shall be legally removed from the site. I think it just said so, <laughs> snow should be removed. We've had cases where they push it out into the street and said, yeah, we removed it. No, legally removed to a legal snow storage area. Uh, roof overhangs at, at uh, under the roof overhangs at all times, abutting sidewalks shall be kept clear of snow and ice. And C, trash, hours of trash removal, and I think this equates to the lady that commented tonight. I wanted to uh, uh, clarify hours of trash removal. Shall be between, I say, 8.30 a.m. and 4.30 p.m. We don't need to have the uh, window there, and when you read that, it allowed for trash removal to happen at midnight or one or two in the morning. No, we don't want that at all. So uh, no trash removal uh, uh, 
unless it's uh, between 8.30 and 4.30, 8.30 a.m., 4.30 p.m. So those are comments I had, and I, I think Cy had a couple, too. Are you done? I'm done. <laughs> Uh, a couple introductory thoughts before I get into my comments. Uh, you know, when we started this project almost a year ago, uh, yeah, a, lot has, a lot has been accomplished. And I thank you guys for that and I thank the input from the, uh, from the people over the course of the year. Uh, one of the biggest things was density. Density was brought up right out of the gate and it was commented on every, at every single meeting by board and the public. Uh, it's, it's been a major concern. Uh, you took a floor off the project, but it's still dense. That did little to resolve the density problem, but it is what it is. And uh, I think it seems acceptable to those who really want this project to go through, so I'm going to let that go. Uh, so that left my concerns with parking and loading and unloading as well. Parking, we did agree that it would be 1.25. We did agree to grant you that, and I agree with Bob. I don't think we should change that. I think that should be the minimum. And uh, I think you went about getting that by converting regular spaces to compact spaces yeah. to achieve a, a number of 1.25. If you had to achieve 1.3, we'd have more compact spaces. That's mm -hmm. my theory as, a, as an engineer, okay? Uh, but again, that's driven by the density. Part, the parking density issue is driven by the building density issue. So I'll, since I agreed to let the, the building go, I'll let that go too. And uh, uh, so having said that, I think what you have there today versus what you would have is obviously going to be an improvement, okay? There's still a lot of concerns about it, but it's an improvement. From a loading and unloading standpoint, the options that were put forth to us, and that one right there, I have to say is unacceptable to me. I'm very interested in seeing how you work this out with RMLD, okay? But right, as I'm looking at that one right there, I, I cannot vote to agree with that. Now, let me go back to some of the other issues. There's a lot of things in this draft right now that are uh, not specifically defined. I'll give you some examples. Uh, on page 12, it says in there signage. No signage has been proposed. Well, I'm going to I suggest that that be changed to say there will be no signage. Okay, let's get specific on these things at this point. This is the final agreement. Uh, under waivers, the number seven, based on the options that have been put on the table at the moment, I find them all unacceptable and I cannot approve, I would not vote in grant of that waiver. Uh, I really want to see what you come up with with the town. Uh, as far as the other waivers are concerned, which waiver? Which waiver? Can you repeat which waiver? I'm number seven. Number seven. On the loaded. You had several options there, okay? And I think the peer reviewer recommended that Option one two. as the best, yeah. all right? I, I cannot accept it in its present form, okay? That's one board member. Uh, if you go to conditions, number 11. Is it number 11? Yeah. Um, it says under street improvements, where possible as it relates to this project, sidewalks should be widened to allow provision for public amenities such as benches, bike racks, and parklets. Uh, where possible. Again, that's not an exacting mm -hmm. statement, okay? That's, that's a wishy-washy, open-loop statement. It's got to be, I think these things in the final agreement have to be very specific. I don't know where the bike racks are going, other they say some will be inside and some will be outside. Uh, but, and benches, I don't know where you're gonna put the benches, okay? But we need to get specific on these things. Off-site parking, number 12. The applicant remains committed to identifying other private and par uh, public parking spaces. Committed to identify. That's not specific, okay? We need to get specific. My view of things is that uh, you can look for private places to park. You can look at public parking spaces to use for the project. 
if it's a private place that you find, then okay, you can. I, I think you could say we would we would uh, use private parking spaces that we can reach an agreement on with whoever owns it. Or if you want to use public parking spaces with the agreement of the town whoever in the town requires to do that. But I don't think we need to leave it open. It's very ambiguous the way it is. And I just don't like unambiguous, non-specific statements in final agreements. And I guess that might be all I came up with at the moment, okay? But again, as we go through this thing and our course of our review internally, if, if, I, if we see some, unambiguous, some ambiguous statements that are not specifically definitive, I think we're gonna have to make them definitive. And hopefully as we get into this thing, we can discuss them as we find them and, and get your input on them as well. I don't find anything, I don't find any big deals here, okay? But I think we just need to be specific. No best efforts, okay? I don't, think, I don't want a document that has best efforts in it. Okay. Mr. Chairman, if I may, I mean, I, I agree. Can I, can I just, I think it's important. One second before I recognize Sorry. you, sir. Sai, were you, were you finished? I think so. Full okay. time beer. Thank you. I just, just wanted to make sure he, you didn't interrupt the mid thought. Thank you. Please proceed. This is a, a final document. We certainly acknowledge that. But some of the deep, by its definition, 40B, the plan set that's required for any comprehensive permit application are schematic plans, not final construction details. If the board is concerned about some details, make it contingent upon the building permit, which is when those details are going to be provided, but to say there's no there's no language upon signage, so the applicant can have no signage. Well, we have no waivers, so we will meet whatever the town bylaw is for signage, and we will have to demonstrate that to the building inspector as part of the building permit. So if you're uncomfortable about no park benches being shown, make it contingent on the building permit to show those. So the building inspector can say yes or no, that doesn't work, and my client will have to uh, amend the, the working drawings, the construction detail. But the level of detail that's been provided, I grant you, is not perhaps where the board would like it to be, but relative to the context of 40B, they've provided a lot of details. The building permit is where all the details need to be provided. So if the board is uncomfortable about something, I would suggest that Julie makes it a condition to receive a building permit to show those details, but not go as far as to say, you've shown no signs, so you get no signs. If we haven't asked for a waiver, we get no special condition, but we can still have a sign providing it meets the zoning bylaw. So I think it's important to recognize the intent of 40B, what the plan that shows now, and what our building permit plan set will show. Perhaps. Uh, if I can make a suggestion too, um, you know, and we can get more into this when I when I do. But one of the comments that I had, sort of along the same lines that you just discussed, is that at some point you're going to have to submit final plans, and we're going to condition for submitting final plans to ensure that they're consistent with our approval. And so, if that's not already otherwise in this decision, it ought to be. Um, and so we ought to condition for it because you're gonna, it, it's gonna have to happen whether, you know, whether as you suggest at the, the permitting stage or at some point we need to make sure that the final plans that you're gonna, that you're gonna use to, 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 to satisfy the town requirements are consistent with our approval. So let's just condition for it. You're gonna have to do it anyway. Uh, and that, you know, and I just throw, and I just throw that out there for, for, for board consideration, but also for your comment as well and feedback. Yeah, well, that's, cu that's customary. I mean, the building inspector, as part of his or her job, will look at it and say, does this plant say, here's, my, here's the comp permit issued by the ZBA, and which is recorded, does the plant set I'm reviewing comply with the conditions and the plans that we submitted? That happens, on, or it should happen on any comp permit. Right, and, and if the language isn't already in there, my suggestion is that it be added. That, 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 that's, that's all. And, and I, don't, I don't have a problem with what you just said. That's a degree of specificity. It's just Likewise, it's not here at the moment. Okay? You have every right to want to see the landscaping plan. That should be a condition of the building permit, a final landscaping plan. So those, that's well, all we're saying. You know, while we're on the sub, while we're on the, go ahead. Go ahead. No, 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 you know, while we're on the subject of, of, of plans, you know, uh, well, you know what, I, I'll wait, I'll wait till my, 
feel like I don't want to muddy the water. Side, did, did you? I'm sorry. Were you guys? Do you have anything more to say on yeah, what well, side? Had to comment like on the sidewalks too. I mean, that kind of is uh, the town property, mm. so it is. It's kind of work, work with DPW, and we, it, 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 you know, and if you again, what was there now, and what we're proposing? I mean, it is a disaster there now. There is no oh, more absolutely. workable sidewalks. So. It will be an improvement, but we need the input from like DPW who says at this section we could go five feet, but only here it can only be four feet. It's not our property, so I think that the, the point of putting that is is that we'll work with DPW, and if there's a place where they say, hey, can we do a sidewalk here, we're willing to work with them to identify those areas where it could be widened, it can be. Um, but it, no matter what it is, it's a vast improvement and it's wider than really what's there now is the hazard to people. But that, I think, that's why that that one wasn't so specific, but we're happy to work with EPW and they let them tell us what they want there. I could also comment just thematically the same concept of, of I won't say later approvals, but being, com uh, being compliant with town and local ordinances. Uh, with regard to you made a comment about uh, parking, dumpster, material stores, and so on. Uh, typically what would happen in a project like this, and I'm not suggesting or advocating that will be storing material or dumpsters offsite anyway, uh, but a construction management plan will be prepared to be reviewed with the town and signed off on in, in approval um, as part of the overall construction. I don't make mention of that because there may be times where, you know, we are forced to, let's say, uh, you know, rent a, a, a section or two of the road and have a police detail and you know, all of that will be well coordinated with the, you know, with the city in advance, um, you know, as part of the overall construction. Again, I just think that, um, again, uh, if the board would be in the approval would say, you know, the final, uh, the final approval will be conditional upon compliance and that and We have conditions for um, construction schedule and staging plan to be reviewed by town staff, as well as a pre-construction meeting, which is something that we do for every project in town. Um, and we, we have certain processes if an applicant needs to block a sidewalk or block a street, they get a police detail, they put up certain barricades, they move out pedestrians. Right. And we have all these processes in order currently and we we use them and review them with every project that comes that's built in town. Thanks, Drew. Cy, did you have anything uh, further no. for the record? Okay. No. Kathy, do you have anything to uh, to add regarding comments on the decision? I don't have a whole lot. I mean, I still think we have some work to do on this decision, and you know, in consideration of what we've learned tonight, and needs to be included. Um, and I do agree with my fellow board members. But for me, there's just the two main things. Um, I really think we should need to stick with the 1.25 per unit requirement. Um, and I'm still struggling with the loading zone myself. I think um, it's a very congested area, and I I do have some questions about that. Um, about that, where that is at this. But right now, I don't have a whole lot to add, so thank you. Thanks, Nick. Uh, just a few comments based on what was presented tonight. Um, I am okay with the 1.23 parking ratio <coughs> because I don't want to see the community space impacted and turn into a parking spot. So I just want to put that out there. And then on page 19, the parking management plan, uh, I have XI. Um, I realize it's 13 unassigned visitor space. I would just suggest that those do not be assigned until there's 100% occupancy, maybe even a few months after, <coughs> until it's clear that those spaces are not needed for visitors. Just because five for this multi-unit development potentially might not be enough. Um, and part of that parking management <coughs> plan, I think should also include coordination and move out and move in, just to make sure you don't have a situation where there's two Truck showing up at the same time, only one load is bought. That's all I have. Sorry, can, sorry, Nick, I can hardly yep. hear you. Can you just say those things one more time? Yeah, sure. I was saying uh, the parking management plan, mm -hmm. uh, I think, should also include coordination of the move in and move out so there's not more than one moving truck at any time. Okay. And that the 13 unassigned visitor spaces, I know that it says in the conditions that there'd be five, but that the remaining eight not be assigned until 100% occupancy, or even a few months after, until it's clear that they're not needed. Okay. Thanks, Nick. Um, John, you deferred. Mm -hmm. 
Do you still want to defer, or would you no. like to no, have that? Okay. I think in in every multiple unit entity that comes before uh, this board or the product that is is down the road, been in operation for a period of time, um, there are four things, four items that seems to be somewhat contentious by the people who are occupying that entity. Uh, one is parking. Uh, everybody becomes very territorial on where the where can I park? A second is loading and unloading uh, because it affects the parking and the flow of traffic in and out of the uh, of the structure. Um, a third, and you are, you are addressing all of them. A third is trash. Cycle versus non-cycle. How do you get rid of it? If it's a dumpster, when is the dumpster company coming, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and the fourth one, um, because of our area of the country, is snow. Every time we have snow of any amount, um, everybody gets very uptight because you've got to clear the space. I want to come home from my job. I want to be able to get into my space if that's the parking. But it all relates back to, to parking, I think, a lot of it. So as I went through this, um, I have some of the same concerns that my fellow board members have. One is uh, specificity or specifics on the, on the final plans. Um, if I look at uh, page 10, for example, the findings, um, I am concerned about one of them, and that is number eight public health and safety and welfare. Uh, the board finds the development of this project will not endanger. I don't like will not. Um, this board can't make that statement. This board can say, finds the development of this project appears not to endanger. Um, because I don't want to be held accountable as a board member for saying this never is going to be down the line in the court someplace. Um, the item about the parking, um, I agree with, with what has been said already. Um, the compact spaces um, you related uh, and your footnote was that Marlboro and Woburn um, has areas that, it, that have 25% or more um, of their parking spaces for compact spaces. Um, we're not Marlboro, we're certainly not Woburn. Um, but because we, we needed a 1.25, because of its location to the um, MBTA, public transportation, uh, compact spaces is becoming um, something that is being addressed by the auto industry and uh, the people who are using vehicles uh, to get from one place to another. So I don't, I don't have a problem with the compact versus the regular. Um, the four uh, access spaces for handicapped, as long as it meets ADA, um, I don't have a problem with that either. In fact, uh, because of the situation, especially in apartments today, um, you may need more than four, but if four are available and it meets the ADA requirements, four are acceptable. Uh, the loading zone um, in the findings and what we've been talking about, uh, I feel is very critical. Um, I think option two, as was recommended by Jason, uh, probably is the only one that fits um, this particular location. Uh, and to turn this down because there's not sufficient loading um, is not something that Mass Housing would uh, be approved of. Um, I am concerned about, on page 11, uh, the public safety aspect of it with the emergency vehicles, uh, whether the emergency vehicles are going to get inside to get to the elevators, to get people down and into the emergency vehicles. I don't know what the 
average height of a, an ambulance is today. I know different different departments, certainly not Reading, I don't think, um, goes over the eight feet or the seven feet, six for the height of their ambulance. But I know that in other communities, the ambulances are much larger. Um, I don't know what, what the options are on that down the road. But if you're talking about bringing the unit, bringing the emergency unit in, uh, if it doesn't meet those standards, Later on in the future, they will have to come to the front door. They will tie it up. On the waivers, um, I think we discuss um, most of the issues. Um, I was concerned a little bit about the um, width of the. The, the driving aisles, um, if that meets state standards, uh, and Jason is suggesting that it does, uh, the only concern that I have is that this one-way exit, uh, when you do, when you use your compact spaces, uh, coming out of there, right, and then going down and, and making a left and going out mm -hmm. that exit, making a right, making yes, making yeah, a right yeah. and going out yeah. that exit. Um, I don't. I suppose that by um, taking out some of that or just uh, hashing out that area that would allow additional, right, it allow additional area to make the turns. Um, so I'm, I, I guess I'm, I'm feeling that in cases like this we're going to have to go with whatever your, your suggestion is um, uh, through the expert of that chief. But none of this is actually in the final plan. I'm talking to size, specificity. We don't have a, a final set of plans. The final set of plans need to have, which we, which we have to vote on, has to have a loading zone. If that's the loading zone that we're going with, we need something from the DPW that finalize that. I don't believe as one member of the board, I can vote on something tonight until we have some of the specificity, and we talk about the, uh, what was brought up, the landscaping, we don't have a landscaping plan yet, a final landscaping plan. We need to have that. Um, only because in our decision, the con those are listed as conditions in there. We have to have something on paper that we can refer to. You mentioned going back to, to daytime government, whether it's the building inspector, uh, the, um, DPW, uh, the town engineer, uh, whomever it may be, we don't have those specifics yet. Um, I'm not sure exactly how we get to that point. Uh, we've closed the public hearing. I don't think we're to the point where we can finalize it. I don't, I don't know if 40 days is going to be sufficient to get all this stuff done, but I certainly uh, wouldn't have a problem. Um, with asking the board to meet in a working session open to the public um, with the developers uh, to, to work out these things on the final draft, to, to get a final draft with the final plans on some of these things. Um, in the past, major uh, 40Bs that this town uh, has been involved in, um, one of which never got to that point, uh, because we did a PUD, uh, CPDC decided to do a PUD instead. Um, all of this was worked out in that particular vein so that there was something that the board and the town had to work with. Um, I mean, I can continue on with the highlights that I have. Um, the off-street parking, we don't have control of that. Um, off-site parking. I'm sorry, off-site off -site parking. Um, the, uh, as I said before, we don't have uh, any letter, anything from BT, DPW <coughs> on the riser poles uh, versus location of the transformers. We need that. Um, oh, I started to say, in the, other, in the other two major 40Bs, streetscape was extremely important, which was addressed by a couple of the uh, people here this mm -hmm. evening. 
streetscape is not mentioned any place, and we're, the board is saying we want something recognizable that's going to be in the best interest of the town of Reading. Uh, we give that up to you working with, um, with the daytime government to, to do a streetscape that's going to be work, workable. And, and, and it's going to be, we're not de deciding that, but it's still part of the, um, the draft decisions tonight. Uh, we did the architectural aspects of it. Um, that's inside the building. We're not, we're not doing, I mean, we're on the outside. Zoning is on the outside, not the inside. That's the building inspector, the engineer, um, daytime government. Um, Building code review, that's building inspector. Um, the only thing I, I don't know, and I have to ask Julie, do we have a letter on file from both the police department and the fire department that says the final plans are acceptable to us and we stand behind that? I do. I have emails from both of them um, telling me that the plans that you're seeing here tonight are acceptable to them. That's all I care about. I kid, I, I don't think the board needs to stand behind something like that because we're not testifying to that. That's other people testifying to that. If something goes wrong, I don't, I don't want it on the board's head. Um, curb cut approvals, I mean, we've already gone over that. Um, if, if we decide to go in that, that direction, uh, we meet the ADA requirements. Jason says we do. Uh, the transformer, DPW. Um, uh, right. Um, we talked uh, again extensively on the loading and unloading zones. Um, I think I think that has to that has to to be ferreted out until we have something on paper. Um, signage. Uh, I don't care about signage personally. However. If you come before the CPDC and want something other than what the town allows in signage, where, guess where it's going to end up? Before this board all over again. I don't want to see it again. Uh, site work, uh, that's again, as Julie said, the town has specific uh, guidelines on, for setting that up. The destruction of the uh, buildings that are there, how it's to be handled, when it's to be handled, where the, where the uh, employees are going to be parking, all the rest of that. I mean, that's something to be worked out between you guys and uh, daytime government. Mm. But I don't think, I mean... Uh, it's also bonded against. Yes, I saw that. But all that bonding uh, is between the legal people, town council, uh, all its representatives, and uh, the town and, and you guys. I mean, all we want it to be is safe. Um, so I guess what I'm, I'm wondering is, what is the best way to get this done? Because certainly, uh, I for one, am not interested in taking a vote tonight um, as one member of the board because we don't have enough. We don't have a final in many of this. So how do we get through this process, still get a final draft, and get it done within the 40 days? Good. I, I imagine town council um, is adequately could address. Uh, it, again, the claim 40B that I've been part of, where there's conditions at the end that require a plan to change even after this. That you may say, we show a you know if we had 1.0 parking on there, you could have made a condition it has to be 1.25, and that would have been in the written decision that's recorded, and the final plan has to comply with that. It's going to be peer reviewed during the permitting process. So there's plenty of times that things, details, you say it has to be this, and th that's the condition of the, you know, in the decision. So in my experience with 40Bs, there's always things that are left unanswered, but are answered in the decision as to what the conditions are in, in terms of plans. Sometimes there's a final plan that addresses it all because it didn't change, and sometimes there's not because there's still issues. Um, but if the decision is what you know dictates, and if there's specific conditions, the final plans have to comply with those, or else no permit can be issued. I, I think uh, 
That's what I was going to ask for next. What is the recommendation of town council? Ready? <laughs> sure, I will speak to Please it. Please do. Donna Brewer here on behalf of um, the town council's office. And it is indeed correct that you do not have final plans, but that is not what you need to vote on. You do vote on schematics. You would vote on the details that are provided in the sketches and the other plans that you have. I do know that you were provided with elevations, you were provided with a planting specification, you were provided with a uh, landscaping plan. What I have seen as suggested a couple of different ways you can deal with it. You can either, if there's something in those plans that you've already got that you really want to be certain are preserved, then you would make it a condition the other thing you can just do generally is say that to the extent that you have not addressed a specific issue uh, that is presented in one of your plans, you are incorporating all of those plan details into your final decision. So that, for example, you don't have a final landscaping plan, but you do have a planting schedule, a planting specification. If you have some language like that in your decision, then they're going to be stuck with the planting specification that they gave you for your decision, for your vote. So you can lock them in based on what they have provided to you, and um, that will have to be uh, followed in the final plans that get the building permit. Now, what about, uh, we have two issues. One is the proposal on the um, loading and unloading zone, mm -hmm. and that's uh, predicated on what DPW, uh, I'm sorry, the Reading Municipal Light Department is going to do with the transformer mm -hmm. and the rising pole. Um, so that's a major issue relative to this decision, one way or the other, whether it's that or something else. Well, let's think about that for a second. Based upon what town council just said, if we give them, if we give them that, that's on the plan, and tell them it has to be that, and it has to be that with RMLD complete sign off on the location of the transformer and the pad and access to it and the rising pole, then they're stuck with that in the condition that we add regarding specifically RM RMLD approval of the pad slash transformer and the rising pole. Okay, and and so. You know, I, I think I think we can get there, John. But but in in, in you know, in keeping with with what Donna and the, and the applicant have said, I, I think we can get there, and we, we're going to hold them to what's in front of us now. Now, part of what part of what my suggestions were going to be as part of my review of the decision is um, perhaps there are some, and and I took this out of a, out of another another decision that I had in my office, but. Um, where a decision provides for perhaps submitting revised plans or other documents following the close of the hearing, um, we'll review them and provide them with a response as to whether those plans are consistent with our decision. You know, give us a reasonable amount of time to do that from submission of those revised plans. Um, and then it's up to us and daytime government to tell them whether or not those revised plans are consistent with the conditions slash plans that we have now, or what we're you know what we're conditioning for now. So I, you know, unless you know unless I'm completely off base on that, maybe you can touch base on that as well. Right. So what how I phrase it is, if you get revised plans that you think address loading better or parking better then what I would suggest is that you condition, you put in your decision the condition saying parking must and then describe what it is in the revised plan that you like. So you're not reopening your public hearing, that's closed, but what you're doing is writing a condition that is consistent with a design that, that you will all accept in that 40 day window that you have to come up with conditions and a vote and a decision. 
Does that make sense? So you're going to predicate it on the within the 40-day period? Yep. Or you're talking about beyond that? You have to vote and have a decision done within the 40-day period. So you're going to have to, if, if you don't like, uh, for example, any of these loading plans, and you as a board come up with a, a revised plan that you like better, within the next 40 days, you're going to have to vote on that and put that in as a condition of your decision. Alternatively, we could condition for it tonight you could, and you firm could. it up during any subsequent meetings within that 40-day period. You could, yeah. So there, there are a couple different ways, I suppose, to, Can I just to ask get there. Go ahead, Julie. For clarification on that. So they closed the public hearing and presumably no more new information can be provided right. by the applicant or the, or the public. Right. So how is it that they're going to come up with some new plan that they're, they're going to just draw it up themselves and then decide they like it better and vote on it? Or no, I don't understand. No. no. So, okay. so the board is going to, they, as they've said, if a revised plan comes in, they're going to consider it. It's not new evidence. What it will be is um, that will that will frame what their condition is based on their unacceptance of what has been presented at the public hearing. Okay. So it's, it's, so it it's depends your, on how specific we want to get. It depends on how specific you want to get, or you can just say um, a, a condition that the final plans are going to have to show something else. Right. And so we ought to, you know, we ought to think about that as to whether or not we can find an acceptable way to do that, or if we're going to stick with we just we we don't like it, we don't know what to do about it, we need more information from the applicant. But I don't I don't think personally, I don't think other than giving them option two with specific conditions regarding uh, absolute RMLD approval of the pad and the transformer and access to the transformer and uh, the rising pole, location of the rising pole. Now, if they can't keep the loading zone there with the proposed location of the, the pad next to it, then that's not in keeping with our decision and our conditions. Okay, and, and so, you know, they have to figure out another way to, to get to what we've given them. Am I all wet on that? No, I can see that. I can see that, but um, if that's what we're doing, then... Um, I'm looking at the calendar down the road, too. In two weeks, we see another 40B coming before us. Um, we're using up um, our time frame, and um, if something needs to come back before this board for us to review one more time, I certainly would not like to get another stab at, at the final draft as its next iteration um, so that we'd have something to be able to sit down and to vote on, even if it's it, it has to be pub, part of a public hearing. We don't have to do. We don't have that now. It's good. We don't have anything set up. No, no, but, but we don't have enough of a decision. If you're, you're, I'm just, just tell me if I'm reading between the lines. I'm misstating what you're saying. We don't have enough of, the, of a decision right now to, to vote on it. I think with conditions that in draft. I mean, it's draft. It's a draft. It's mm -hmm. Still a draft. It's okay. not a final. It's not a final decision. The, the principles that we condition for in that decision should be pretty close to where we need them to be. Uh, you know, and if there are sticking points among board members, we ought to perhaps vote on specific areas, perhaps waivers or other things that we want to make sure that we don't tie up our valuable time with down the developer's valuable time with down the road. Mm -hmm. uh, but if the boards, you know, if the boards generally can agree that we're going to condition for certain things, approve or deny certain things, and, and, and close the hearing, then we ought to make sure we have everything as nailed down as we can. But 
uh, you know, in keeping with what town council and, and perhaps, you know, the language that I suggested regarding, um, you know, if there are re revisions to plans that need to come in uh, during that 40-day period based upon a relocation of a transformer, um, you know, but with the loading zone there, that as long as it's in keeping with what we set out today, uh, you know, we, we can incorporate in our decision or, or it doesn't comply with our decision. So you actually don't have to vote on tonight if you, if you don't want to. You could generally say, uh, we want to look at another draft of the decision and see if it incorporates some of the comments that you've made tonight. And Julie can kind of try to work up that, for example, for the loading dock, area, the loading zone area that it would incorporate in this design tonight, if you haven't seen this before, and uh, reference it specifically. And then if she tightens up some of those conditions based on what your comments are tonight, then you could discuss it and vote on it at your next meeting. Or you can vote generally tonight that you accept the conditions of, for example, it must have a minimum of 1.25 parking spaces and the other conditions you've talked about. But uh, you do have that option. You're not required to vote tonight. And you can just vote on the draft decision with the changes that we've talked mm -hmm. about tonight and then vote on a final decision later. Well, I would like I would like to see that. I mean, just for example, what Jason had mentioned, um, which was exactly where I was coming from that um, the parking um, in terms of uh, it needs to be uh, assigned by unit. Mm -hmm. How they assign it is not a question. Um, that seems like something you could put right in the condition. Okay. Pretty, Sorry, pretty straightforward. But, okay. Um, the other issue is um, the remaining 13 spaces um, mm -hmm. which you wanted to be able to um, re-rent or whatever, uh, eight of which you could re-rent, five of which would stay as current uh, visitor. Um, my suggestion is that they all they would all be visitors all the time. Uh, only because uh, my experience uh, in the last ten years or so has been visitor spaces are very difficult to monitor. I wouldn't want to be the traffic controller on site, and I don't know how many other properties that you have, but um, that that becomes a real issue. Uh, Re-renting them or reassigning them or whatever uh, leaves a lot of problems down the road, uh, especially when you have two and three bedrooms. The one bedroom is one thing, two and three bedrooms are another. But I mean, some of those things, I, I think we need to be able to nail down too. Um, so I, I definitely would like to see the updated draft um, before we finally vote. All right. Um, but man, well, go ahead, Matt. Uh, just real quick on the parking. Um, I think one of the comments we've heard from the beginning too was, what if there's a unit that has more than one car? So what we're trying to do is say, all right, let's designate some definitely for visitors and put those in a spot recommended by the peer reviewer near one of the entrances. And let's leave open some that we don't think that, we actually don't think that there'll be many cars, units that have more than one. So if two did, then they would assign, you know, space, you know, 80 and 81. And then the rest would remain visitors. So it was just trying to a balance of what we've heard comments um, through the whole time from the board, from members of the public about having visitor and having the ability for those units that may have, and we're still mostly one bedrooms, but if there are a few units that have more than one, a plan like that was kind of in the middle trying to accommodate both. Um, and so I think um, that just addresses that. And then just a, a real quick general comment, we, we reviewed the decision and um, uh, there's been like three or four comments we made to um, town staff and the town council, um, that, and one of them's already uh, been dealt with. One um, 
was regarding that loading zone and red and green and the light, which is the utility that really isn't part of the board's purview. I mean, it's a condition we have to have it approved by red and green and light, like any other utility. Um, but regarding that loading zone, it sh I think in the decision it says 17 by 30, and what we would say is that it would be, uh, that loading zone would be 12 by 30. I guess it could be 35. Um, if we move that space um, and put it somewhere else. But um, I think the way it's written in, it's a condition, um, again, is, is what we were looking for. Uh, and other than those couple issues, the decision was acceptable to us um, for the most part as it was drawn up. So I, once we start, I just want to you know, look at it from, you know, there's some good comments made, and, and, and I'm more than happy to come back after the fact, the condition to, to show you the final plans ensure that they comply with the decision, and I you know, they do enjoy doing it, so I would come back to the board at a later date to show you those plans, but some of those won't get done until we're working on the construction drawing before a uh, building permit. Well, we, we also condition here for, for plan changes, uh, page 14, paragraph 14. Um, you know, there is, there is a process governed by the CMRs that dictates how, how we have to deal with uh, those changes. Um, one comment that I might add, that I wanted to add in is perhaps we want to define or give examples of what substantial might be so we don't get bogged down in minutia. Perhaps substantial could be something like a request to relocate an exterior wall, material changes, involving architecture, style of materials, uh, property lines or setbacks, and, and loading and parking. And, and we lump it in there with regard to what's, what we consider substantial, which then ticks off the CMR requirement of how it's to be handled and conducted. Um, you know, you have, well, I think it's like, you know, 20 days from, a, from uh, submission of a revised plan in order to uh, review and, and advise the, the, the developer so it all has to be done within the 40 days but you know I mean that, so there I mean there are there are provisions in here and I don't know what the board thinks about perhaps defining substantial so we don't get <coughs> bogged down in it or whether or not the board feels that it's fine the way it is um, you know that would be a suggestion that I would have in that in that paragraph as well and I think that offers the board some protection with regard to uh, change, perhaps changes uh, or proposed changes. I don't know, what do you think about that? Dawn? Yeah, that sounds, sounds good. That sounds good. I was just looking up in the regs to see if they define substantial. I don't think they do. No, they don't. That, yeah. yeah. Again, I, I, I took it out of a, another decision that I had bouncing around in my office. Um, but, you know, that's just an example of what substantial could mean. And I think that helps to fence us in or rein us in so we're not debating on whether it's substantial or not and that we call out things that we think are substantial, things that are important to us that we've let the developer know that if they're going to come in and change those, um, you know, we get, we get into the, 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 that section of the CMR requirements and we have to be given opportunity to comment on, uh, which, of course, we would at all, but that get, brings us into the, you know, post-close of public hearing scenario. Um, so I guess, uh, you know, I'm, again, and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm open to, to feedback from my colleagues here, you know, I'm in favor of closing the public hearing tonight. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. We have to. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, I mean, there's, there's, there's no, you know, John, I know, made mention that you, you're looking for some more materials. Um, I, I don't, you know, I don't necessarily think that that, I don't, I don't agree with that, respectfully. Uh, you know, we have to close the public hearing tonight, and we're going to close the public hearing tonight. And do we want to add some specifics into um, conditions now? Or do we want to use the suggestion that Donna made, and that is uh, close the public hearing, make reference to a draft decision, 
uh, with revisions to be made at you know another public another open hearing open session. you know open session thank you for the right word <laughs> to be held on a date certain where we you know where we nail some things down I mean it's pretty clear it seems like the board members are in agreement that we're going to they got to stick to the 1.25 spaces I don't I don't think we have any and that's already in the decision so we don't have to change that uh, I think we've heard that we want to have some have a condition regarding this this loading zone that's a sticking point for many of us um, and more specifically that if if a loading zone such as depicted in that figure on the screen is to be accepted it needs to be conditioned specifically on that's what you get that's where it is um, and condition it on explicit RMLD approval for having the transformer in the pole in the right place, whether it's as they suggest it might be or somewhere else on site, that's the loading zone that they get mm -hmm. and they gotta do whatever they gotta do to, to reload to locate that transformer where right. it's acceptable to our right. to our MLD. And I don't think we're gonna hear from mm -hmm. the applicant that that's too onerous. No, I don't think so. Are we? I, I was I, I, I did miss that last <laughs> Go ahead. No, my, 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 my suggestion is that if the board is inclined to agree to the waiver request regarding op the option for the loading zone that's in that figure, uh, that we could do that uh, and condition it specifically or, or just give you, give you that figure, what's in that figure for a loading zone and do either a, a concurrent condition or a separate condition that no matter what you know what we approve as far as that loading zone you still have to locate the transformer in the light pole where our MLD says you need to and if it's not going to be next to the loading zone where you suggest it's going to be it's going to be somewhere else that our MLD tells you it has to be and without giving up any of the other uh, conditions and or um, specific Approvals that were that were that were the board is inclined to grant, and that, so again that again my, my suggestion is chair. I'm seeing a lot of nods and 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 gestures by other board members, and I wonder, um, are we all okay with that? Yeah, I I, am. I, I think that's you know there, there is no driving force. You got to have one without the other. Or something. No, the loading zone is there. Transformer they, goes where they can be mutually exclusive. Yeah, it couldn't fit there. Right. It would have to, it would be, it wouldn't be in compliance with the decision. Right. And so if you have to move the transformer somewhere else besides next to that loading zone and it's going to impact your parking, it can't go below the ratio that we've decided. Right. Yeah. If it's going to be moved somewhere where it's impacting, I don't know, moving the building, moving the building it can't because we, we haven't given you that. So it's, so it's got to go somewhere on, on site that uh, is in an appropriate place that ha gives appropriate access and, and meets with RMLD's conditions along with that that poll. Go ahead. And, and just on this plan, it shows 70. It, it shows the loading as 17 feet. I think the, the, the plan that will get approved with, from uh, RMLD would show a 12 foot loading zone with a five foot path next to it. I know it's semantics. It's still going to be 17 feet. Well, I mean, is that a right away or, or what is that? No, it's just it's, just it's part of your property that you're going to use as an access. It would like any other house when you put for our MLD, but it's not a it's not an easement. It's not a right of way. It's no, no. it's it's just a an open space seven, that they can use to get to where they need to go. If they right. needed to set up a, some a machine, now, equipment there, they have a, a place to set up. A, a what end. if the what if the transformer doesn't go next to that loading zone? You're going to still keep it 17 feet, and you're not going to have that right of way or whatever we're calling it path anymore, right? We're, uh, we're very a what if? That's what a, a, a what if scenario? Hypothetically. The, the hypothetical is if it doesn't go there, we're going to be having to come up with a, a different plan. And we're comfortable that that meets all the right Back before the board. Yeah, we're 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 100 comfortable with the condition that a loading zone has to go there, and RMLD has to prove a transformer there, as well as every other thing in RMLD. Well, you want us to condition that the transformer goes there? Just that we get there. <laughs> <laughs> Right. right. That, you know, I, I think you need, 
RMLD approval, you, you've suggested, and we don't have a plan that's suggested yet because I understand it's still under discussion, but you've suggested that you want to locate the transformer pad next to the loading zone. We don't have a plan that depicts that, but if we see a plan that depicts that, you would obviously not go through the cost and expense of putting together a figure unless you got RMLD or unless it was part of an RMLD approval. Am I on track there or generally? I mean, you're going to have to show them something in order for them to approve it. We, we, we do, and we, ha we have. We're waiting for the, you know, right. we, we're, we're very comfortable. We do the process like we would with any other utility because it's <coughs> ready, municipal light, it gets into, you know, the, the towns of town department. But for the purposes of the utility company, we're going to have to do the same thing with, say, the gas company on, you know, where that comes in and the water, water and sewer and, um, there's a lot of utility work to figure out and improvements that will probably have to get made to accommodate what they need us to do. Um, just like water and sewer, you know, we have to work with the water and sewer department to identify where it's coming in and it has, you know, all that stuff that has to get worked out. But, Mr. Chairman, if I may, I mean, just to get tactical for a second, uh, what you have is a, a, a pretty robust, detailed decision from our perspective. We acknowledge, I think there's a couple of things that the board is um, still a little uneasy about, but it's not like, you know, there's 90 items in the decision. I'd say it's probably maybe a half dozen. I think Julie and, and Donna have done a good job kind of capturing what the concerns are. My suggestion, forgive me for suggesting, but it's just to circulate amongst the board a track changes version of the decision. It'll be limited to those items that show, make sure the board's comfortable. You have the whole deliberation period to talk about the decision. And then, oh, by the way, my client will probably choke me. You have an additional 20 days to actually issue the written decision so at the end of the deliberation, you don't have to have every I dotted and T crossed to, you know, to do that. I mean, you don't. So, so my, my point is, I think, I think we're close. I mean, I don't think there's a, and, and the other thing is, there is um, uh, the, the concerns that you have, I think, can be reflected in writing relative to loading, relative to landscaping, textually. So we're not allowed to submit after tonight any plans, even a slightly modified plan showing where that new parking space will be. We can't do that legally. No new information can be submitted once the public hearing is closed. Once the written decision's been issued, we can come back and like that. So I guess what I'm saying is I think we're close. I think you all just need to see the decision that reflects some of the things that we've talked about. And at the open meeting, talk about it, and then hopefully you can vote it. I wanted to at least correct something I said to the board. So there is in uh, 760 CMR 56074 a description of examples of things that are substantial or insubstantial changes. But they don't address a number of the things that David just brought up. So what you can do is you can say, in addition to the things that are deemed to be substantial under the regulations, the following are also substantial changes that require uh, return to the board. So long as they're not in conflict with the regs, you'd be OK. Mm. I mean, <coughs> adding additional. Yeah. Yes, yes. But so not subtract. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, right. So do we do we need to, do we need to, to pull the board or, or or are we in general agreement that we can uh, vote to close the hearing? Yeah. Well, Matt's, <coughs> Matt's willing to bet the confirmant on what he's got so far, especially with this is a major issue. So if you're that confident, no. I mean. Well, we, we've already had, we've had conversations with our MLT. We're not going to just have it. No, no, I, I realize that. You are very, you are very confident, so we spin the wheel, see what happens. Yeah, no, we're, we're, I mean, again, we're, we're very confident we'll, we'll come up with a solution that is ultimately the transformer over there, because that's where it's always been, and that's what they've looked at before. And 
moving it back there is basically what it was before that they were okay with, and they weren't okay when we moved it all the way back that they had to walk to. So um, to that effect, though, um, again, if we lost that space there, and the board is insisting that it's 1.25 and not 1.23, and that, that the board could do, I, I, I wouldn't want to come back here just to say we put the space in where, you know, we took 200 square feet of the club space and made that one more space. Um, I, I just want, you know, I, that, that, if that was a condition, we would, we would need it. Um, but I just wanted to let you know that's where it would go. So that there wasn't any, we're not trying to sneak any of, the, of those spaces, you know, that, that's where we have room to put it. Um, so, and then, um, but yeah, we, uh, and, and having the, just the description of the condition match what we um, anticipate. And there is a plan we have worked with RMLD that we've sent RMLD that we do have that shows what I'm talking about. I just, um, we don't have it. We don't it, have it. It, 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 it's a utility. I mean, it, it really is outside. It's, 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 the location of the transformer is important. It has to be approved. You know, it, it would have to be approved no matter what at any time. And, and sometimes they we may, we may have one at this point somewhere during the process. It may change because something else changed. But, you know, it, those happen all the time. So we're comfortable, again, with the condition that RMLD has to approve. It's already there. It's in yeah. uh, Page 14, paragraph right. 9 at the top of the page. Right. You know, we may amplify it specifically. Mm -hmm as it relates, well, I mean, to all utilities and, and maybe perhaps even call out, you know, the one area that's up in the air as a result of the moving of the loading zone, but it is what it is. You're going to have to get it anyways. If it makes everybody happy, it can't make you that unhappy because you've got to do it anyway. Okay, so, I'm sorry, go ahead. So, so with that said, I think uh, unless and I'm certainly open to any further comments by any members of the board. I think if we don't hear any comments from any members of the board, I think it would be appropriate to, uh, for somebody to make a motion to close the public hearing uh, with the uh, conditions to be circulated to, with the conditions as, as elicited by the board tonight, Julie's been writing fast and furious. She's got pages and pages of notes and edits to the decision. Pending circulation of a red line draft or a, a track changes draft to be reviewed by the board at a further public session on, and let's figure out what date. I think there were a few dates. I have an open session. Not a public Sorry, open session. I keep getting it wrong. Uh, open session on... Let's see, we have, uh, we don't have February 2nd, because that's the opening of another public it, hearing. It is. Um, 40B. You could maybe do this after. Yeah. I'm sorry, do what? Do this after that. I mean, I suppose we could. I mean, that'll be a short one. I mean, well, well they'll, they'll present. I know their full we'll, design team is not available that night, so it might not be as long of a presentation, presentation as, yeah. Um, and then generally, on the opening night of a public hearing, we would move to open up with a 59H account. 53G. 53G. <laughs> it's okay. 53G it's account. Um, and probably continue the hearing. That's probably all we have to do. Thank you for correcting me. That's okay. Uh, yeah, that um, sounds great. So I suppose we could do it. I mean, what, what do you, what do the board members think? I mean, we've got, we're opening another 40B on the second. One of you guys is not mm -hmm. here that night. Um, here. Yeah. yeah, and so uh, we could open and close that 40B and then review the draft that night. Do we do we want to do that? The other date after that is February 16th. Well, sure. I should add also on February 2nd, you will have town council here because of this next 40B, so you might take advantage of. Well, that's the other thing. We you know we can cut down on our legal bills <coughs> because we won't have to ask town council to travel out here for a specific meeting because they'll already be here. Right, right. Yeah, but we have one board member who can't be there for that particular night. Um, is it possible that he could review that and get his comments in? Yes, he can submit comments just to me from mm -hmm. CC the board, and then I'll distribute them to the board. Mm. As, long well, as, you give me, as long as you give me more than one evening. Mm -hmm. I, I usually try to. 
And, and so, uh, for size benefit, because you have nothing else to do, Julie, you'll try to, um, I'm being kidding, obviously, uh, try to get a track change decision out to board members like next week. Next week. Yeah. That'll give Cy enough time to, no? I am out of pocket, out of state, from January 24th until February 7th. So, if you could, can you email? Can you email this to me? To revise draft? Yeah, that was my plan. That, yeah, that's yeah, the plan. Because I'll have my, I can. Yeah, I, that, that's the plan. Have it with you. Yeah, she's yeah. going to send us all okay. uh, I think that's uh, a context. proposed yeah. track like change to decision. I like doing that sort of thing, <laughs> but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So do we do we do we want to take advantage of the fact that town council will be here? We're all we'll already be in 40B mode and, and do this on February 2nd. Sure. All right. The applicant okay with February 2nd. All right. So I'll entertain a motion from a board <laughs> member to close the public hearing uh, pending a review of the. Uh, draft decision as circulated by Julie, keeping in mind all the concerns and conditions that have been elicited by the board tonight. And moving and and to con and to have a open okay. session <laughs> on February second. Okay. All right. So moved. Yeah. So moved. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Robert. Any discussion on closing the public hearing and meeting on the, the second? Hearing none, uh, all those in favor? Opposed? Hearing none, passes unanimously. Only five of us needed to, to vote on that, just the five full members. Um, all right, so the, uh, the public hearing is, is closed. Uh, thank you, everybody, for your patience, assistance, and, uh, and, and good humor. Uh, we'll see everybody on February 2nd to uh, get as close as we can to finalizing the decision. And I, I think you, you might want to let people know February uh, on February second, it will be the second item on the it agenda. It is the second on night. the agenda right. after and the opening of we'll the also be taking We don't have to stand up here anymore. <laughs> no, the, the meeting on February second is taking place yeah, in the selectmen's room at town hall. Right, it'll be yeah, held in the, uh, in the selectmen's room at selectmen. town hall. All right, I will uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. Yeah. That's what we'll move. Second. Robert, all those in favor of adjourning? We are adjourned. Thank you, everybody.